All right, we are going to go through an example fluid mechanics problem, talking through pressure drop in a circular pipe. If you'd like to go through the equations that we're going to use in this video first, check out the link in the description. So here's our problem statement. We have oil with a density of 920 kilograms per cubic meter and a viscosity of 0.4 kilograms per meter second, which is flowing in an average velocity of 0.5 meters per second in a 10 meter long, two centimeter inner diameter smooth pipe. First, we gotta calculate the flow Reynolds number and then the pressure gradient and the maximum flow velocity. So first off, we're gonna calculate the Reynolds number. And the nice thing is we can pull all the values that we need to calculate this right from the problem statement. So we can pull out the density, it's 920, the velocity, which is 0.5 meters per second, the diameter of the pipe, which we just have to convert from centimeters to meters, that's 0 0.02 meters, and the viscosity. And we can plug these values straight into the equation, which is really nice. So this is what that looks like. Um, we're gonna put the, the units in here as well and make sure that they all cancel since the Reynolds number is unitless. So we can go through, cancel our units here, kilograms cancel, seconds cancel, uh, meters in the numerator, cancel down to a single meter and then those meters cancel as well so we have all of our units canceling which is what we want and then if we calculate this out we get a Reynolds number of 23 so that's the first part of our problem done now in order to use the next equations we have to verify that the flow is laminar and that it's fully developed so Reynolds number being 23 is well below 2100 which is our laminar flow threshold so it's clearly laminar, and we can make the assumption that the flow is fully developed so that we can do the problem. So the next thing we need to calculate is the pressure gradient, dp over dx. And from the previous video, this is the formula that we have, negative q times 8 times the viscosity, all divided by pi r to the fourth. So we can pull some of these values out of the problem statement like the viscosity and the radius we can pull out, which is 0 0.01 meters, that's half the diameter. Um, but Q, which is our volumetric flow rate, we're gonna have to calculate, right? So this is in cubic meters per second, and Q is always equal to the flow velocity times the cross-sectional area of our pipe. So we do know what U is, that's 0.5 meters per second, and the cross-sectional area is gonna be pi r squared. And one thing that we'll notice is if we take, you know, before we calculate the area and go to the trouble of calculating Q, if we plug U times A directly into our equation, we get the following. dP over dx equals negative U times pi r squared times 8 times mu all over pi r to the fourth. Now this is really nice because now we can cancel pi, we can cancel 2 r's in the numerator and two r's in the denominator which looks like this so we end up with a dp over dx equals negative u times eight times mu all over r squared which is really easy to work with so now we have all the values in the problem statement we have mu equals 0.4 we have r equals 0 0.01 and we have u equals 0.5 so now we're in a position where we can plug these values in to the equation directly, which is really nice. So this is what that looked like. dp over dx equals negative 0.5 meters per second times 8 times 0.4 kilograms per meter second all over 0 0.01 meters squared. Important to keep track of units here um, just to make sure that we're in proper units that we've done everything correctly. So we separate the units out to the right. And what you're see, seeing here is we've got kilograms times meters times second squared in the numerator. I'm lumping those together because that is equal to one Newton, kilograms meter over second squared. We also have uh, square meters in the denominator, which I'm pulling out separately here, because when we have Newtons per meter squared, that's equal to one Pascal, which is the unit that we want for pressure. So the fact that we can get this um, Pascal unit um, means we're on the right track. And then we have Pascals per meter. That last meter is coming from here. 
and that lines up with the units that we need for change in pressure over change in length, pascals per meter. The rest of, of this um, is pretty straightforward. We're just going to calculate these out, and we end up with a change in pressure over change in length of negative 16,000 pascals per meter. So that is our pressure gradient. If we were if we were looking for the absolute change in pressure, we would multiply this out by the length of the tube. But since it's asking for the pressure gradient, this is our final answer for the second part of this problem. And finally, we're going to calculate maximum flow velocity, which is really straightforward. The maximum flow velocity for laminar fully developed flow in a pipe is always double the average velocity, which is given to us in the problem. So we just double that and we end up with a maximum flow velocity of one meter per second. So that's it. Pretty straightforward problem. The most challenging bit is just calculating the pressure gradient. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Check out the previous video if you want to see where these equations are coming from. As always, um, feel free to request any other topics that you'd like me to cover. Thanks.